Specs and pricing of the Ryzen 7000 series is popping up. Also, what's popping down is EV pricing and uh, Intel's GPU might um, be in an oopsie doodle. Oh, bad. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I could find for you on this fine Friday. We're going to start off today talking about the Horizon 7000 series of chips because there are more indications coming out about what the potential specs and maybe even pricing structure of these CPUs are. So a lot of this is coming from a WCCF tech report where they speculate a little bit on the price, but say that they have some confirmation when it comes to the specifications on things like the 7950X with it having a base class clock of 4.5 gigahertz and a boost clock of 5.7 gigahertz. Considering the current generation can't even hit 5 gigahertz on boost, that is quite an increase and lines up with what AMD's been telling us about their next generation chips. They're also speculating that it could potentially hit $700 in the price point and have 64 megabytes of L3 cache and 16 megabytes of L2 cache with that L3 being what AMD refers to as the game cache in order to make things faster. The 79 900X will be slightly slower at 5.6 gigahertz. The 7700X, not 7800X, coming in at 5.4 gigahertz, and the 7600X coming in at 5.3 gigahertz, with all of them falling in line with the core count that we expect from the current generation. So a lot of that is very similar to what we have here. The pricing structure that WCCF Tech is showing, like $600 for the 7900X, that makes sense. $300 for the 7700X, is a little unbelievable, as well as $200 for the 7600X. It's entirely possible, but let me remind you that the Ryzen 5 5600X launched for $300 and the 5800X launched for $450. So I would expect that the 7700X should be somewhere in the region of $350 to $400 and then the 5600X, it, I, I, it didn't make sense when the 5600X launched at $300, so I really hope that they do drop it to be about $250, but I think $200's a bit low. But these are pretty decent specifications. They line up with what AMD has been saying their next generation is gonna be capable of, and you can see that the Ryzen 9 chips are gonna be at a 170 watt TDP as opposed to the 105 watt TDP that we've come used to with the current and previous generations of Ryzen chips. But WCCF Tech also reporting that not only are we getting those clock speed increases, but we're also getting an eight to 10% IPC uplift, which in case you're not familiar, just means that for everything a processor does, it would do it 10% faster than the previous one. So if they're doing two things at the same time, the, the, the new one gets 10% more done in the same time thing. I, I'm great at analogies. <laughs> Additionally, things like better than 25% performance per watt than the current generation makes it so that they're good looking chips. There's also some reports that that they might not be overclocking for this next generation, but rather only under volting being allowed because of them running very hot and very powerful. And one of the things that AMD has become known for as they've had the Ryzen chips out is the fact that they give you all of the performance in the box. They don't not they don't hide it from you and be like, oh, you gotta you gotta learn overclocking if you want the full potential. They just give it to you, which some people don't like. They want to tinker, they want to tweak in order to tap into the full potential. Other people are just like, hey, this is great value. Thank you, AMD. I'm good to go. Which side of the overclock versus non-overclock side of the argument do you fall? Do you prefer if a company just gives you everything that the chip is capable of and they have consistent yield, so it's like there's not a lot of variation? Or do you prefer things like the silicon lottery where you are like, oh, this is the golden sample. I can go up to 7.7 .7 gigahertz on liquid nitrogen. Obviously extreme on that side, but let me know down below in the comments. But AMD also letting us know about their next generation motherboards. They had the Meet the Experts event where they showed off their X670E motherboards coming out to various manufacturers, such as Asus showing off the Crosshair X670E Hero, the ASRock motherboards, you can see the whole host of them there, Gigabyte having their shown off, as well as MSI showing off their Godlike and Ace. But on top of that, MSI also showing off things like their M.2 expander card, which is gonna support a PC PCI Express 5.0 SSD, but two of them, and then you slot them in, you get faster SSD storage. It sounds like something I need to put on a PS5. Anyways, a lot of motherboards, a lot of chips. It's all moving forward. More tech, more power, more goodness in the speed of your video games. That's what's happening. And what's happening right now is Bitcoin crypto stonks things that I do around here. Okay, Bitcoin. 
it's it's down a lot today. 4.25% to be at 22,480. Ethereum down 3.8% to be at 1592. And Dogecoin down 2.8% to be at 6.6 6 cents. And I let Reese down yesterday because he asked me a question and I didn't respond. So I'm going to respond to him now and then I'm going to ask a question myself. Uh, the weather here right now is actually quite hot. We're in a heat wave. We actually set a record temperature here today, Reese. Uh, and it's about to thunderstorm. So that's pretty good. I'm wondering, Reese, uh, what did you get from Ikea recently? Thank you for that lovely introduction, Brett, even though I have no idea what it is. Hi, I'm Reese. Welcome to UFT Deals. And today we're bringing you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. This is so far one of my favorite deals to ever be on this. This is the glorious GMMK 85% 10 keyless bare bones keyboard kit, which is fully modular, completely hot swappable, and you can put in your preference of three pin keyboard switch. This is a great way to get into the mechanical keyboard game at your own pace. And it's currently going for only $54.99, which is 50% off. And next up, we have the ViewSonic VX2768, which is a 27 inch 1440p curved VA panel running at 144 hertz. With one millisecond response time and FreeSync premium, this thing is a monitor. It's currently going for only $199.99, which is $80 off the usual price. You can find all these deals and more in the link in the video description. Back to you, Brett. And Lucid is now a, not a UFD deal because I don't know if I'd recommend that you buy it, but it's on sale because they had their Q2 reports this week and uh, it is it is not good. Lucid's supposed to be a Tesla killer where it's going to come in with the ultra luxury, bringing in the Lucid Air that can go zero to 62 per seconds and go 500 miles on a charge. Initially, the report for production was that they were going to make 20,000 vehicles this this year. Uh, then they said we're going to be able to make 14,000 and now they're saying that they're going to only be able to make between six and 7,000, but they've only made 1,400 cars so far this year. So uh, their pacing for that six to 7,000 also does not seem very good. The CEO blaming it on logistic issues. They've had supply chain problems. Their cars actually also haven't been up to snuff. They've had major recall efforts. They've had to actually scrap a lot of the cars that they've built because they don't meet the quality standard that they have. And so they're just, it's, not a good situation, but they did announce that they're opening up their Saudi Arabia plant. So uh, I, uh, I don't know. I want more competition. I just, I, I was never considering a loose in the first place. So if they disappear from the market, it doesn't hurt me, but it might hurt the ecosystem as a whole because having luxury brands of regular consumer goods does still help to drive innovation forward. But on the opposite side of things, Volkswagen coming in with a lower priced ID4. This is one of the most popular EV SUVs out there. And they're gonna have it start at $37,495, which is before the $7,500 tax credit that's out there. The way they're getting this price reduction is by making it a smaller battery. They're gonna call it the ID4 standard and it's only gonna have 62 kilowatt hours, but capable of 200 mile range. But it's getting some upgrades where the optional 12 inch infotainment display will now come standard. It's got charging, all of that stuff as well as driver initiated lane change and travel assist is now gonna be standard. That's kind of kind of neat. The most expensive version is going to be about $54,000, which tracks with what you would expect a mid-range electric SUV to be. So it looks like it, Volkswagen's making some good, they're trying to hit all areas of the market with this one vehicle. And as they come out with more and more, uh, hopefully things will get better. I still am very much anticipating the ID Buzz that is like honestly the perfect vehicle for my situation right now. Electric, a minivan, as long as it's all wheel drive, I'll be golden. It's supposed to be 70 grand, which, <laughs> which is what people who uh, use Microsoft Teams on Apple have been saying, but now it has Apple Silicon support. It's, there you go. In case you were using a Microsoft product on an Apple device, now you could potentially be better because of it. And that's what's happening with the Steam Deck because Spider-Man Remastered is officially verified on the Steam Deck. Insomniac Games tweeting that out, that it's Steam Deck verified, which means it should play well, it should play at a reasonable resolution and frame rate. It's gonna be good. But in case you've been looking to get the Steam Deck and you're not part of the United States, there are a few more countries that are opening up to get it. Not South Africa, sorry Reese, but you can get it in Japan, South Korea, Hong Kong, and Taiwan with Komodo being the retailer who's gonna actually facilitate that. They handled the Valve Index 
VR headset that they've been selling for quite some time. So now that's gonna happen with the Steam Deck. Hopefully something like that does happen for South Africa. I keep seeing tweets of like the people I follow from SA and they're just like, when are we gonna get the Steam Deck? I don't know. And when are we gonna get final confirmation of the RTX 40 series? I, I don't know, but we're gonna keep talking about the rumors as they keep popping up. The RTX 4070 getting renumbered, new numbers coming out for it with it having different CUDA cores than previously. It's supposed to be faster. According to a well-known leaker, the CUDA cores that were supposed to be for the 4070 Ti is now going to be on the 4070 class card, which is about 500 more than the previous 4070 rumor that was out there. Ah, we'll find out when they're here. And what was supposed to be here already was Intel's Arc Alchemist GPUs, but they're still very difficult to get a hold of. But now Igor's lab coming out with a report that uh, it's dicey, things are looking rough, that uh, Intel's Arc GPUs are on the brink and that they are not uh, making their partners happy. It's not just the internal stuff, but system integrators, board partners, and even retailers not being positively, what's the opposite of peeved, enjoyed by, by the people that they're supposed to be collaborating with. According to the report, one major AIB is actually shutting down production of Arc graphics cards due to quality concerns, not being mentioned which AIB partner that is, but it could be the likes of an MSI, a Gigabyte, uh, an Asus. ASRock yesterday announced that they're coming out with the Intel GPU, so it'd be weird if they are shutting it down just after the announcement, but uh, I, I, I mean, it kind of lines up with the fact that we were supposed to get them in Q2 and we, uh, we haven't yet. And uh, there's no definitive ETA on schedule. But if you want to check out yesterday's episode of Hot News, where we talked about why you would want to buy an Intel GPU because of its media encoding. Anyways, you check out yesterday's. I'm coming back on Monday. I'll see you for more tech news later on, my friends. Hot News. Goodbye.